Hi guys, welcome to Chart, where we chat about art. This week, we're going to talk about what is art and try and answer the question. But before that, we're going to discuss how we individually got into art. We are Finn, Mara, Javier and Christy, and thank you for tuning in to listen to Chart Podcast. We are so stoked to have you here with us and let you take some time out of your day to hear us discuss any things that are happening in the art world. If you are a new listener and you are not subscribed yet, what are you doing? We would love to have you on board of the Chart Squad so you get notified every time a new episode goes live. If you really love the podcast and got some value out of it, we would like to ask two things. One, if you could please give the podcast a five-star rating and a review wherever you're listening to it. And two, if you can possibly consider taking a screenshot of it, listening to it on your device, throwing it up on your Instagram story, so people can find this content as well. Speaking of Instagram, feel free to follow us at Chart Podcast to see more of us and send any questions you may have. We love hearing from you. Without further ado, let's jump into the episode, where you will get to know us a bit better and how we got into art. Let's roll. Christy. <laughs> That's a serious introduction. That's like a serious song. Okay, Christy, please do tell. Go ahead. I, I kind of grew up where my dad was really interested in drawing cartoons and I really liked that. Uh, so I kind of tried to like draw cartoons with him as well. I vividly remembered there was this one time where I had hamsters and I made a really big maze out of foam boards. <laughs> for my hamsters so that was like kind of my first interaction with like crafting and art and stuff I never was really exposed to what art is in like the contemporary setting in terms of its value or its um its political context and all the stuff that it addresses uh, and then I went into high school well more like middle school and I did like I really liked just drawing in general so I, uh, I, w- I did like art for school, but it's pretty monotonous and it's very like, <coughs> dictated Such by it. the system, if you will. Like we have to write a lot of reflections, as we all know, um, just and, and research that is not necessarily good research or of, sub- of substance just to like get to one point where you can actually make the work. So throughout that one year and a half, we'd only be able to make three works, which was awful. Um, And uh, my middle school teacher also told me that I lacked creativity. So I better not do the fine art module and instead I should do the design module, which I was fine with Um, that. And then I went into a boarding school in the UK for A levels and I I took DT and the product design because of like the whole design thing and I also did um fine art painting and history and maths. <laughs> That's where I really fell in love with painting because my tutor in a uh, fine art department he was a painter himself. He graduated from Royal College of Art and then he also painted in Amsterdam. Um, and like, I just find his work incredibly interesting. His name is Peter, Peter Lilliet, if you're interested. Um, link, in this and, uh, link in bio. <laughs> link in bio. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and that's kind of how I really got into the whole idea of the process of making art. But again, not necessarily um, art theory or stuff like that, because um i was also one of those where my entry point to art was aesthetics and i also thought um it's just about making things look pretty to me or of of what art is and what um the idea of making is um and then i went to art school because i just thought it would be really fun to be in art school (laughs) uh so during my time at slade it was also very much like I was struggling to find my style as well um because a lot of the people were talking about like narratives like painting uh what does it do what is it supposed to do like how is it engaging people and I actually find that quite stressful that I have to like it's like kind of an agenda that you have to do 
to give your work to engage people and i find that it's almost like a design brief and i really didn't like that um so anyway i graduated uh which is when i decided to uh learn a little bit more about art theory and art history because i was still struggling to understand the whole deal about what really is art and what does it do because I, even after graduating from art, art school i like to me art is just fun to me art is just a way to express myself and something that i really enjoyed and i wanted to kind of find a deeper not necessarily deeper meaning of it but um how other people view art so that's when i came to sotheby's institute of art and uh, learned a lot about art theory and art history and met some course mates that are now friends <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that's so beautiful i didn't even say Thank we're you. no family oh, right. um, it's kind of yeah. similar for me but the reason that i came to sotheby's i mean do elaborate yeah, so, yeah. Uh, my history is that I, for me, it all started uh, when I was little. I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> and I, I, was, I was madly obsessed with the whole space race. And for me, when I saw the first time I saw the picture, which was taken on the Apollo 11 mission of the view of the Earth from the moon, before they were to land. For me, that's an image that I still think is, it holds so much power because it can really, it is just this single image holds that whole time of the Cold War and that space race between the US and the, the Soviet Union. And it's just embedded in this one image. And also besides that, the whole idea for me, I like photography, that's my main thing. Here we see the earth from a completely different view that we've never seen before but we know the earth so well i mean it's our surroundings we know it's 70 percent water the clouds are above us and now we see it in such a new way that for me that's really about that's what art is about it's having a different opinion having a different view on something and there is no pressure to having to agree with that opinion or to agree with that view but it's just for you to open your mind and yeah when i saw that image i started photographing a lot i stole my parents camera multiple times then i got one myself and they were very happy with that but then i had to make a decision on what to study and i had my mind set for like so many years that i wanted to go into medicine and become a gynecologist it's something that I still am very interested in. throwing so many curveballs here. I know. Like, going the amount forward. of... Wow, there's a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. And then I was studying for the entry exam for medicine. And then um, my parents said, maybe you should go to the open house of the, the art college that's very nearby here. So I said, yeah, sure. I'll just go and take a look. But I was already like, nah, I'm not going to do that. And then I went there and I had a conversation and it's like, yeah, why not actually? And then I registered for the entry exam and I got in and then I just said, okay, let's, let's do art then. Let's do visual, visual arts. But then, like you said, uh, the education, it, I was never agreeing with the way that they would, you know, teach us. Mm. Uh, and then when I did my master's last year, I was so annoyed at the end because I was so proud of my work. I still am very proud of that work. But, and it sounds maybe very stupid, but my grade was lower than somebody else's grade. Mm. And I just didn't understand because the works are so different. Like mine was a very experimental work where I experimented with the medium of photography and experimented with um, cameraless photography. And he just made a very traditional documentary series on Kazakhstan with an analog camera, medium format, very standard. And he got a much higher grade yeah. than me. And it just bugged me so much still to this day. I mean, his work is good. That's not the point. But I just don't understand why there has, like, there's like a grading system. Okay, yeah, yours is this mm -hmm. and yours is this. And it's just a grade. So that's why I went to Sotheby's because I was like, I really want to know more about art. And I yeah. want to know 
if there if there is a, a reason for this grading system like what are what are other people thinking about it how did it come to be and i also wanted to have like a, an academic challenge because that's what i what i missed in my degree a little bit before and uh, yeah i definitely got that um i don't think i like to write essays anymore i'm done with that now um, <laughs> <laughs> dissertation yet to come <laughs> oh shut up <laughs> like no <laughs> it's no um, so yeah, that's how I got into, got in, and now I, for me, I found a quote, I did some research, oh my by God. Uh, uh, Henry Matisse, uh, mm. what, he, what he thinks about art, and it says, what I dream of art is an art of balance, of purity and serenity, devoid of troubling or depressing subject matter, an art which could be for every mental worker, for the businessman, as well as the man of letters, for example, a soothing, calming influence on the mind. Something like a good armchair, which provides relaxation from physical fatigue. Just he that, speaks like an artist. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes, but the um, whole idea of art being kind of the foundation of culture, mm. but that it can be viewed as something that you should feel welcome in. You should feel, you know, connected to and, and not feel scared to walk into that gallery or walk into that institution and, and maybe not see it as this dude that's standing two meters further of you is like giving this huge explanation of, about abstract artwork and it just it's about feeling and having a connection with the work for me i actually found another quote if you will because i was also oh. wondering in my <laughs> head like what actually is art and i was just on tate's website and i found uh yinka shino bear's uh quote who was a British Nigerian artist who was still alive. Um, right. And what he said was, it was really when I was at art school that I started to see the relationship between history, philosophy, politics, and art. Prior to that, I thought that art was just making pretty pictures, but it's actually, <laughs> but art is actually connected to life. And yeah. I think that is like, it sums it up so beautifully in a very concise and very easily understood vernacular, um, which is kind of like a, if you were like a summary of what Henry Matisse said, right. put in contemporary terms right. um, of where we are right now, um, it, because it, it's, it's such a great way to reflect right. what surrounds us. And it's a great way to like, as an entry point to um, understand history in the past now, like, and for people in the future to understand right. our dealing with the world right now yeah. that's i found another quote that oh really my god <laughs> <laughs> by mara's favorite boy edward munch <laughs> oh. <laughs> i oh, don't like him i am unsure how to pronounce his last name it has okay. been there's been a few <laughs> things thrown around i think the british school <laughs> 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 call him like munch <laughs> because they can't do that <laughs> sound <laughs> I, you it's know in Edward, Romania uh, you forget the <laughs> sound for everything it's just <laughs> um i'm just saying it feels like there's no right way to say his name so he says that art grows out of grief and joy and it's born of people's lives and i think that's kind of yeah, yeah that's very it's a good summary of yeah also, I feel it's saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Which maybe it's the point of being an artist, life and death. I'm like, oh yeah, but what? I think it's a really great way to reflect um, what's going on culturally and politically. Um, yeah. But also, it's just, it's also a way for people to express individually instead of as as like a mass group of people right well i would say that you can use art as an expression of a collective of people when you look at art in like maybe a period a particular period of time or a particular country or something like that so i think it's one thing that i always found interesting about art is that in nowadays people have become aware of art as you know always like you always use a narrative to uh, tackle an issue when you use art when you make an artwork about a war or about a political crisis or about social injustice or something 
you're always putting forward your a narrative, like your perspective on, of it, or you're contradicting the narrative of the system or the people behind the that oppression, war, uh, social crisis, etc. Before we became aware of that, people did that subconscious, uh, like subconsciously when they made art. When you look at places like the National Gallery in London or the Prada Museum, or you go to any museum about art before 19th century or even during 19th century, you can perfectly tell the, like how every painting is based on the narrative. But I don't think they were thinking of that when they were making it. It was just the way they were raised and the way they were educated to paint or, yeah. to, to, sculpt, yeah. or to make art. So I think it's interesting because you can use art as a very anthropological tool to analyze society and, and, and see how people felt about events of the past that you normally only get the historical perspective of. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's a point that Christy made in the pandemic episode where we compared the COVID with influenza, where she, she just said that when you go back to the past, you have all the news clippings of the influenza time that are very rigid and very kind of black and white. Yeah. Right. Then you have art as well to feel kind of more the emotional side of it and how people felt. And it's such a big, um, a big asset to understanding right. history. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, Javier, how did you get into art? So, <laughs> that I, big sigh. Oh, like, like wow! It's, it's been, been a long, long ride. Long journey. Wow. <laughs> it was a cold day of winter <laughs> of the year 1996. <laughs> um, no, actually, I find it hard to pinpoint a special moment in my life when I walked into the world of arts. Because the thing is that the way I, I the doors door. flew open, the doors <laughs> through my the door and knocked on it. And open sesame. Yes, and oh. Van Gogh opened it. I'm here. <laughs> I'm ready to talk about art. <laughs> I know everything. Yes. <laughs> Step aside. So I think that for me, I grew up mostly focused on, or not focused, mostly like obsessed with literature, because I don't know why exactly it just happened. The moment I became aware and I was like very very young I was like six seven or five or something like that I became aware of what a book was and that people could tell stories through pages and write in them my mind blew and from then on I could only think about writing and the first time that I picked a pen and wrote stuff I was like 10 or 9 or something like that and it was this very lame story about a mountain that like just overnight like happened in the middle of Rome in ancient Rome and it was like three pages long or something like that. And I was like, book one finished. <laughs> <laughs> Call me and, the youngest publisher. <laughs> yeah. And then when I was 12, like, which was two years later, for me, it was such a long <laughs> ride ever since that first book. I uh, wrote this thing. I don't, even, I don't even think I gave it a title, but it was basically a ripoff of The Lord of the Rings. And I was like, they're going to make a movie of this. Netflix didn't exist, but if it did, surely this is going to be a show. And then I realized it was a rip of the Lord of the Rings. And I was like, oh, I am done. All this effort. All this effort <laughs> of like writing 25 pages. And uh, then after that, somehow I recovered from that crushing realization. And I just didn't stop writing. Ever since I was like nine or something like that, I just didn't stop writing. And now look at me. I'm writing books that get published. And it's insane. Yeah. But the thing is that fun. I always found like the rest of art disciplines as... Like I, to me, they were always complementary of books. Every time I saw, um, because I like history a lot as well. So every time I saw, uh, I started with things like uh, Greek art and uh, Egyptian art and stuff like that, like old, old ones, because my grandmother was a professor of art. So she would always, for me to shut up, she would always, always like give me lectures on Greek needs and stuff like that. And when, I don't know, every time I read about the 12 tasks of Hercules, my first thought was, this is interesting to put in a book. So that was my approach to everything art-related. Every time I started loving paintings, movies, um, sculptures, architecture, everything. And I was related to uh, how can I put this into a book? And how does this benefit something that I can write? And the only time that I really actually thought about dedicating like myself to art was when I was in uni, I think. Because up until that point, I was very sure that I was gonna end up working in a publishing house. And after I did, after I finished with my bachelor's, I 
just couldn't find any job in a publishing house. And that's what I had like this like crisis of what am I going to do now with my master's? So I ap applied for both um, one master's on editorial and publishing things. I don't remember what it was called. And Sotheby's on contemporary art because that was my other biggest passion. And for, because of life, I ended up doing Sotheby's and I'm so happy I did because now I'm like, I now, now I fully understand that writing and applying arts to the writing is something that I can do on my own. And Sotheby's gave, gave me that, it was that gateway into actually working with the arts and becoming more familiar with them and doing things like this podcast. And you met amazing course mates. And I met, forget that. We're now friends. No, yes. family. That's yeah. Family. Like, um, like family. Yes, family. You got exactly. married. Yeah. I got married and I had a daughter. <laughs> yes. Well, basically, that story, long story st short, was that yeah. I was about to have my graduation photo taken. You should and, insert uh, that in the yeah. photo. <laughs> and, uh, but then my parents couldn't come. So I asked my recently befriended humans, which is Finn and Javier and another friend, um, to <laughs> stand in and uh, put a face cut out of my parents so I can have my graduation photo taken. Um, yeah, that's why we're a family and Mara is our lovely favorite tradition. Yeah, but then she's basically, so my fake parents often have arguments. Because um, we love you. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah so they're we're kind of like always before. filing a divorce, yeah. but not really. So that's companies. where Mara, the social worker comes in. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought Chrissy yeah, was essentially, it was like a cry for help. Yeah. And I thought I'd be, I'd insert myself in that situation. Exactly. That's, I was so upset. But, that's um, the podcast, really. Yeah. Yeah. But what have the you test. said about, um, you know, like finding things and applying things into your writing? I, I do exactly the same thing with painting. Like whenever I'm just like on Instagram or like just looking around wherever I go. I would see something and I'd be like, I want to put that on, on the painting. Right. Um, like the other day I was walking down the road and I saw someone using a Harry Potter book to like, to like hold up their no. window because <laughs> of the terrible architecture and the oh. quality of terrible British architecture and building. Yeah. <laughs> the window doesn't stay up. Probably shade on architecture. Yeah, and, and then they just use like a, a Harry Potter book and put it up, and I just thought that's. If only you had a camera to capture that. And another thing is like sometimes I don't want to like take a picture of it, but I want to like work about it through memory. Mara. I just want to say I think it's so interesting that Javier and Finn both came to do contemporary art as a master's like through a sort of like wildly different journey or like maybe a realization a bit later on that that's what they mm. wanted to do. So I think sometimes people think you're literally born knowing that this is no. what you want to be doing. And maybe that's like why people get a bit like, this isn't my world because it's so, you know, it's for those people who are born yeah. with like maybe a dad who's got, I, right. I mean, that, I can yeah. remember the first few lectures. Or, I mean, I know a lot about history of photography and contemporary photography, but I didn't know. Well, I knew all the big names like Jeff Koons and, Oof, that is Oof, like, yeah, big, and, and Damien Hurst. Yeah, I mean, I, I came into those lectures knowing absolutely nothing actually, and those readings were mind blowing for me. And now I feel a lot more confident in in. And being able to to just look at an artwork and and be I feel more free to just you know form my own opinion and in the beginning I was like okay this person thinks this so maybe I should he's probably right he knows more so I should think about right. that too. Um, okay, I my family are mostly architects. Okay. Right. <laughs> and so growing up, my mum, who spent a lot of time with us at home she was very like if we're going to do an activity it's either we go to a museum we're going to do something arty at home we're gonna there was always like a sort of art-based activity so that was a lot of my growing up and my sisters um and I knew when I was really really little I was like I'm going to be an artist like I know I'm going to be an artist when I grow up like there is no doubt about it I was like who are these 
people at school who are like, I'm going to be a horse, <laughs> a fireman. I was like, what are you talking about? How can you know about wanting to be a horse? I always found that, like, those sort of, you know, I want to be this. I was like, you don't even know if you like that. Anyway. Um, you were finger painting and you thought, this is so, it. I'm going to be an artist. Like, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, I went to a French school where art education isn't really valued and I thought at some point like I'm going to move to an English school where you know it was all where these kinds of things are a lot more central to I mean it depends which one you go to but uh you know our education and helping me get into an art school ultimately um but I also have always really liked history and so art history like seemed like a really good fit so um, I did a foundation in fine art at St. St. Martin's, but to me, one of the main things missing was that there was no art education. There was no like art history that I was being taught. There was like nothing to reach back into to be able to create anything. It just felt like I didn't know that much about art history. I'd only done it at school for a couple of years there was like such a big void missing and I just felt like people are a little were a bit pretentious and it didn't really fit in with what I imagined my university experience would be like um so I then did history of art UCL and I really liked it it was nice um it was nice it was, it was okay. enjoyable um and I think when I got to the end of it, I was like, I've done art history, but I kind of feel like I wouldn't want to be in that world if I started working. I wouldn't want to be, I really liked medieval art. I didn't want to be in some basement filing away medieval <laughs> manuscripts for the rest of my life. I just thought like, I want to do something that's a little bit more here and now, like fast paced, and a bit cooler so I applied to do contemporary art Um, amongst other things I thought my fallback would be to continue doing history of art but maybe take a more sort of contemporary approach in that Um, and I got in and it was amazing and I've made friends that I consider family Um, but alongside that my entire life I have always enjoyed drawing I like it much more than doing anything else I will usually not like in my day-to-day but if we go and like hang out at the beach or something I'm always drawing the people on the beach because I quite like drawing bodies and in particular female bodies and it's like something I feel like I never tire of like maybe if I start drawing something else I will always go back to that. I just find it so like nice, relaxing, familiar. Um, Yeah. And I've also always, or for a lot of my life, taken uh, photographs on a 35 millimeter camera. I don't think I'm like artistically good, but I've always liked the fact that you document these things that you then keep and you have in hard form to then look back on it's more like the thought of Mm. being able to look back on it in future and I get a bit stressed thinking like my iPhone pictures will just one day disappear in the void I'll yeah get a new laptop they'll be gone and yeah I think that's everything can really relate to my entire life condensed yeah. I mean awesome. that's uh, the same for me my another reason why photography is just why I love it so much is that my dad documented everything from 1995 to now so our basement is full with like photo books and photo books oh and my photo God. books same you should see some of the horrors we have down there there's like <laughs> pictures but it's, of us and us. Yeah. pictures of our pictures of my sister and I like nude on the beach I'm like yes. what are you doing how did Classic. the camera shop allow you to print these like yeah. what the hell is this like and I can we, just imagine that guy asking like these are your children right just like, like yeah 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 100% <laughs> yeah 
there's like so many funny pictures but yeah my my mum's been like that like very into documenting us growing up which is obviously like at the time that was the only way to take a picture to then go and print it um but yeah I I think that's about it that's like how I've come to study with my friends so a question for all of you Mara did just say that when she was younger her parents would take her to museums and do cultural activities did that happen for you as well Finn and Christy no no I am the I think I'm the only artistic person in my family well my brother is into music um no my my parents but I traveled a lot so I had the, the luck that my parents really wanted me to be aware of history and mm. go to like important places like the Berlin Wall. And right. um, I remember when I was 12, uh, I was on an exchange program with school to Poland. And I was 12, so I, my English was terrible. I had nothing to say. I could say hello and goodbye. And, <laughs> goodbye. And, <laughs> goodbye. And then we went to Auschwitz and I didn't know what that was. I mean, I was 12. Who knows who that, what that is? At he told you to Auschwitz when you were 12. Yeah. And uh, I remember standing in those showers and then uh, the guide would say, oh God. Uh, these are the showers and then it would translate it for us. And then I was standing there and I was thinking, wow, these are big showers. Like <laughs> a lot of people fit in here. <laughs> they have so much space. They have oh, so God. much space. <laughs> <laughs> and but that was that's kind of still engraved in my mind one that i'm very ashamed that i thought that but then again i was 12 but two that wow there's this whole thing that happened before right. i was there and it's like 1997 but so much stuff happened before yeah and that's where i got, really got interested in like photographs because they document that and i think it's right. fascinating that we can see something that's been made Home, like maybe even 200 years because in the um vna collection they have a great photography collection if you ever get the chance mm-hmm. to go there there is this glass plate because uh, like in the 19th century they had to photograph on glass plates and put like a photographic emulsion on there and then put it in their huge camera and it's like this it's this big it's like 40 centimeters on like 60 centimeters and it's this one print and it's still visible it's from 1802 Wow. Um, that's mad that you could see stuff in your mind that far back. You're like, I, I think you cannot humanize what people would have been like or anything. It's just exactly how you imagine in your head. But when you see like clips or photographs, it's like, that is crazy that someone just like me was wearing something like that or doing you right. know, something that is so out of your world. But I think like, my my mum's the same like my uh, my mum more than my dad she'll laugh if she listens she'll she will if we go on a lovely beach vacation she will find a bunch of ruins a museum a cultural site (laughs) to drag us to and my whole childhood and even now we go somewhere she'll be like oh guys you will never guess what there's a bunch of ruins half an hour away we can get in the car now actually they open at seven and you know it's going to be a little bit cooler around seven let's jump in the car the moment you know the sun comes up let's go like that was our whole charge and they used to be like oh she's so annoying like so annoying she always takes on these things and when we go on group holidays with other families everyone be like i'm going to the beach tomorrow like i'm going to have this and i'd say no like my mum has already pre-planned a trip to a museum i will see you in the afternoon she was so yeah it it was looking back i i like it's so helpful it's been so helpful throughout you know whenever i've learned about art history because i've been like oh i went there like i can visualize it in my mind but at the time i was like she's so annoying it's like 40 degrees out yeah. I can't believe she's making us do this. Because, like, for me, whenever, like, I'm the, I would be the family where we're, like, we're going to sit out on the beach. Like, my parents, like, um, I'm also, like, the only person who's really interested in art. Like, apart from my dad is quite good at drawing cartoons and he just likes doing it on the side. Um, but 
when we travel around, it was mainly just like, oh, look at this scenic thing. Let's go shopping. Like we would never go to a museum. Right. Uh, and uh, when I was like 16, I think, when I was actually like developing a, a critical thinking skills. <laughs> it was coming. <laughs> yeah, it was coming. It was slowly coming. And uh, we were in Thailand and um, they were like, okay, I don't know what we're doing. We can just like go to this massage place and be there for four hours and let someone rub their hands on our bodies and I was just like <laughs> you want me to plan out like two days where we actually do stuff and look at really interesting stuff and um, I, I took them to like an art museum a history museum and the zoo love that, <laughs> it was that really like super fun. Um, but yeah it was like so like for me it's like a completely different story um in terms of how i grew up and like what i've been exposed to even right. though like being in asia and being in hong kong being in like one of the most if you will rt places um i was never exposed to it which is such a shame Right. But at the same time, like whenever I go back, I'm like, wow, I've had all this and I always want to like go to see all of them now. Chrissy is the ch child I was jealous of. Growing <laughs> up. I was like, yeah. her parents are allowing her to like go get a massage and go to the beach and we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we're like, let's go eat this, eat that. That's all we cared for. And uh, we had like hot dogs and ice cream in a hot tub. That was fun. I honestly. Funny really thing is that I'm like a mix between you two because I was, my parents were always, every time we traveled, we hardly, like, I think at once in my life, we went to holidays, like to a beach. I was in the Canary Islands, like once in my life. I was 14 and that's it. All the other times, we always go to places where there's like museums, rocks, and ruins and stuff like to look at. But I was like, it was excited for that. I remember I was nine, I think I was nine the first time I came to London. And the highlight of my trip was going to the British Museum. Right. And beautiful museum. Imagine a nine-year-old like so high. Actually excited to, to, to see the Rosetta to Stone. Like, imagine that. Like when I saw it, I was like, oh, "Dad!" I was nine. <laughs> but the funny thing is that although my parents were very, I think it was you, Finn, who said it. My parents also were very adamant in like making me aware of history, and and they just said, "This is a place you need to see." Like it, that, that, I heard that so many times when I traveled with my parents and we would go to, I don't know, the Louvre, the British Museum, um, Rome, places like that. They would just, you need to see this. And, but then we got there and they did not have at all this critical analytical mind about what we were seeing. And I always found that very interesting. I remember I was once with my parents in, I think it was Hamburg. Mm. I think it was Hamburg. Um, is there a cathedral in Hamburg? Yes, yes, probably. So it was probably Hamburg. I remember we were there and my, I, I just became aware of, through a conversation in front of the cathedral that my dad just thought that the Gothic style of architecture just happened. That there was no philosophical and sociopolitical and artistic and religious reasons why you would move from romantic architecture to gothic architecture and that day i was I, it just popped in my head that for my parents art just happened they couldn't see the ever like how it was intertwined with so many other disciplines that advanced and broadened the way people thought and how or they just perceived. how the society was developing naturally right yeah and so I think that's one of the th reasons why I also came into the arts because I was very interested in not only how things happen, like, like, f like I don't know, like why would you some suddenly have impressionism out of this very classical minded um, art world? And why did it happen? It's not like someone just said, you know what, I'm just gonna make dots and boom. <laughs> <laughs> it was it had like it had to be a deeper reason why that happened and like in history as much as i always did i knew that like you never have one cause for something there's like multiple causes every time so, i think like movements sometimes are a little 
weird to think about because you think how can so many people at the same time have had a, like the same thought but it's I, kind of I don't think you realize that it's like now when you know we're all moving towards maybe like a common cause or like we're all starting to think the same way about something particular it's because loads of things have to happen like historically for for everyone to be like hey why have we been painting like this until now and like why don't we change it why why does it have to stay this way Mm -hmm. um and i think movement sometimes it's just weird to think like it does seem like at some point someone just went yeah i'm gonna change this and then everyone else was like yeah you know (laughs) yeah i mean that's an important thing to say that sometimes these changes are subconscious and people just do them and only understand them years later when they look back and see at how it, these things started. But another thing why I always defend art is important is, and why it's not just aesthetics, why it's not just, oh, this painting is beautiful or this painting is ugly, is that it contains so much elements of a particular time in history, just in like the way it's painted, the style, the like the, the, the everything surrounding the context of the artwork gives you such a good picture of what was happening in a certain point in history. I, I sometimes think when people are in art museums and they go and look at a work of art because they've been told like that's the one you should go look at like that's the cool one like but they have right. no they have no explanation as to why it is you know so important they look at it and they're like looks nice but yeah, then sometimes, picture yeah nice. They, I feel sometimes when I'm with my sister, for example, who has a good grasp on art, but maybe isn't like outwardly, like always researching, wanting to know more about it. And I'll go, oh, do you know why this is the way it is? Like, let me explain it to you. And then she says, oh, it's so much more interesting now. And I understand why, you know, it's got the hype that it does. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think sometimes it's a bit like threatening to look at something and be like, oh, everyone's telling me, you know, right. this is so important but i have no clue why but i think that's what's most important is that what it's supposed to do is that it provokes curiosity Mm -hmm. and it provokes um the the desire to know more yeah uh understand it and i think that's what um one of the things that art does and also it's about critical thinking it's um but, I mean, making art itself, it's, it's about creativity. And creativity technically is critical thinking because you're, you're kind of, like, in order to be able to create, you are gathering all these information that is around you and kind of make it into something. I can, like, from a personal experience, when I was younger and being the only artistic person in the family and I felt sometimes that being interested in art was kind of this weird thing because all my siblings are very they have their they have their job they have their life figured out because I'm the youngest and I have a big gap between me and my brother it's like 10 years so they were in a very different stage of their life I mean my sister is a lawyer my other sister is a she she's a teacher then my brother is in music and then my elder brother wants to be a pilot but then is now working in construction like an engineer it's all kind of very rigid disciplines to be in yeah and then my parents as well they were they were business people they made interior doors so not not much creative thinking goes really into that and i felt when i made that decision to okay i'm gonna study art i felt a bit scared it's like okay i'm gonna kind of break away from this uh, certainty when you choose medicine or when you choose law or when you choose engineering it's all very yes or no it's mathematics it's and then now it's really it's like five years after that decision it's really fun to kind of see my family warming up to the to the idea of art and then they then my, my sister suddenly got interested and started following Sotheby's and Christie's auctions and oh wow and uh like ask then she asked me via WhatsApp like why is this painting like so expensive or what is happening here and then it's fun to now see that my family is opening up to that to that whole world and that I'm I'm kind of functioning as kind of a gateway for them yeah. like, to 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 not feel think, as scared. 
what's really interesting about what you said, um, how what what your family does is like rather like a rigid scope of careers and stuff. Mm. I, I do think there's actually not necessarily in terms of fine art, but just what they do is technically re completely related to being creative as well because you know like even though you're being a lawyer even though there are rules that apply you still have to find a way and be creative about right. how you put them into use right. Uh, right like in a case or if you're like a lawmaker and then you have to figure out how to like make it work or as an engineering engineer you have to like figure out what's a better way to make it make this thing work better right. it's all right. about finding new ways and i think art does exactly that or like right. it helps people even though you're not completely into what art is and um and the bedazzle jazzle that's around it that's that's around it um it doesn't matter because it's so deeply inherently embedded in our lives um but at the same time sometimes we just we just don't realize it because we didn't care to put a name on it which is absolutely fine i feel like what we said so far is that art definitely art definitely has the power to educate people mm -hmm. and I to like provoke curiosity but also breaking barriers in a way it breaks barriers because obviously you do need to have a, a a, a brief understanding of the, the social or political issue that 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 was faced during that time or during that area but then since most of our um excluding written words sadly they're mostly very visual and it's about your senses it's about looking it's about listening it's about being attentive and observative of what's around you which is really important mm -hmm. yeah and it helps you to like real sometimes realize what you never thought about before yeah um yeah. which yeah which becomes it, it opens you up in a way <laughs> i think that's why art which is usually does well commercially or in like big modern galleries that kind of thing that draws in loads of people who maybe don't know that much about art is usually really bright really colorful like something you can either touch or like an experience and that's usually that might be why people like like jeff coons or like <laughs> david Huss, like it's david big, Harris. and it's big and it's sculptural and you know shocking colorful. yeah and yeah. it's more so that than it is like let me tell you this crazy meaning behind it it's usually mm. like it's loud <laughs> yeah it's but isn't like but at the same time if you look at it that way because that they're so loud and colorful in a way it does reflect our society right now that yeah. you have like, everyone's sure. like super attention seeking you have to make something big and loud and you have to be this loud annoying person just to get attention it, it, or like you're, you're it's like people's craving for attention and i think in a way, even though we don't really like those works, I think it does speak of um, the realities of our society at the moment. Mm -hmm. Jeff Coons is honestly going to send hitmen to get you. Yes. <laughs> 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 My <name is> Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> we suddenly have to denounce, uh, announce that you're not going to be sorry. on the podcast Only three people now. Yeah. <laughs> she lost her daughter. It's okay. I think it's all so interesting and art is obviously not easily defined at all. But I, I think for some people who don't have a, the you know, best grasp on it or are just interested, it seems just so overwhelming. One important thing we haven't touched upon, and it's interesting as a conclusion to this episode, is that what, what is considered art is always decided like in each period of time so for example nowadays there are things that people consider art and that academia and like museums and galleries do not consider art and it's important to say that in the debate of what is art um there's a difference between what you 
feel as art because as we said at the beginning art is what makes you feel and react and what moves you and and inspires you and all that and another thing is what you formally um referred to as art for example mm -hmm. when we were in Sotheby's a, a classmate of us made a, a or I think he tried to make an assignment about video games as, as art mm -hmm. and he got slammed by our teachers like it's not art because this and this and this and this mm -hmm. so I think it's important to like n n not be rigid with these things art is such a it's a fluid it, thing it's such a fluid thing it's such a Bauman thing and because of that, it, I, I, at least me personally, I don't understand why you have to be so scientific about what is art, you know? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. this is not art because it doesn't meet these requirements. I think it's very old fashioned and unnecessarily rigid. So it's important yeah. to be critical about that as well. And think that when you go into a gallery of, uh, of if you go to a museum or a gallery, Everything that's there, it's art, of course, because it's an art gallery. But don't think that because something is not shown in museums or galleries, it's not art. Yeah, that's true. Because really true. everything has its potential. And again, like we're not trying to define what art is ultimately because it's so hard to define it. Right. But um, it, it's more about being open to the stimulus that is around you and mm -hmm. to actively look. I think this is so important to actively be observant of what's around you. Like just when you walk past something, because like just walking around in London, there's so many public art right. and a lot of people don't realize that. And it's such a shame. Um, yeah. Look, it's so important. Hope you enjoyed listening to our first ever episode as much as we enjoyed making it. If you especially loved our episode, we would love it if you give it a 5 star rating and a review and even consider taking a screenshot of this episode and posting it on your Instagram stories. That way we know that you loved it and other people can find our podcast as well. If you're not subscribed yet, again, what are you doing? Subscribe and get notified every time we publish a new episode. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Chart Podcast and if you want to see our faces while we talk, Find us on YouTube at Char Podcast as well. We'd love to hear from you, so if you have any questions, feel free to send us a DM. Definitely tune in for our next episode where we will highlight four black artists in response to the current Black Lives Matter protests that are going on around the world. We are Chart, and we'd hope we'll meet you again at some point in the near future. Take care. Chart out. Love you. <laughs> See you. Love you. Bye. Bye.